All right, so now I, I must mention one thing. Now, because here what we are doing, what we're trying to do here is to put all the data into one array and then convert that array into uh, a JSON string. That way we just need one to add this, um, this data on one string or one control that we can read from. But the alternative can be, you can add hidden uh, inputs here everywhere and give them unique IDs, then you can collect that data from them. But I think that becomes a little bit complex because there'll be too many items to remember. So I think converting them to JSON is more convenient. So I think the reason why it's saying uh, illegal string offset here is because we're trying, it's saying illegal string offset, meaning it's taking the info. This is on one, line 122. So I think it's taking the info as a string, but then we are trying to read from it like an array. I think this is where the problem is because we haven't declared this array at all. I think it makes sense to do this because now you are creating an array and adding an item. But when you specify an actual array item like this, then it becomes a problem because we haven't declared this array. So I think <clears throat> there's a simple fix to this. So let's just do info is equal to array like this. That should solve our problem here. So let me refresh and there we go. Okay, so we got that. And we got that. Okay, JSON encode. Very nice, very nice. So now let me come back here and let's click on, let's inspect this element so that we can see what's going on under the hood. So if I come down here, my, uh, okay, this is my situation here. So you see there's a button here and then there's uh, info, okay? Now the problem here we have is that info if you look carefully here, info has uh, these double quotes here on the outside. But the problem is that JSON also uses double quotes inside to represent uh, items. So this becomes a little bit of a problem because once there's a second double quote here, it's go just going to close this and ignore the rest of the data. And you can see that right here, because if I try to look at info, it looks like it only contains a bracket here. So to confirm this, let me try and read from it so that we can see what's happening. So what I will do here is this, we'll try to get this attribute here once we click the button. So to do that, let's go to products.php in the view, and let's go to show edit product right here. So what I want is to use the target because the, the button that we clicked is this one and it's the one that contains the info attribute so we can use the target. So in order to make your, uh, your targeting more robust, you can say, let me just say alert so that we can open that up because how to get the, the item is to say e.target like that, dot get attribute like this and the attribute name is info like that okay but instead of using just target like this use current target like this current capital t now what this means is that for example i've seen uh, a few that uh, get confused when they use things like font awesome let's say for example you add an on click listener here but then inside here, you add font or some stuff like, like this. What's here and there, okay? So sometimes what happens is it will return, uh, the e.target will be this item that you clicked and not the button itself. So to avoid that, we use current target and what current target does, it looks at what, where the on click listener was and that's the item it will return so it's much better to do it that way so just uh, use current target instead of just target okay so let's alert ourselves to the contents 
of the info attribute over here and that should be enough so let me refresh the page and click boom and as you can see we just get a measly bracket here so this is not very useful and like i said the reason is because of the double quotes so what we could do is let me go to the product class right here we can strip we can exchange the double quotes for single quotes inside here so that uh, it's easier to get all the data. So let's do just that, which is easy. If I come here, I will say JSON encode. And then once that encoding has happened, we can replace the strings in there. So I will say something like, um, so this has, has been encoded, but I can say string replace over it like that and hit enter wait a minute i want you to give me the options like that so the thing we are searching for is the the double quotes like that and now this this becomes a problem here because we are using double quotes here to to de, to 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 tell it that we want a double quote. So we have to escape this character here by putting the slash like that. Or we could use uh, single quotes outside like this and put a double quote in there. I think that should work fine. And then we replace this with a single quote in there. So just like that, single quote. And then the subject is this, uh, JSON info, like that, okay? So once we've done this, we are replacing the double quotes here. So let's see if that actually works. So I'll refresh this page and then inspect the element and then come down here to the button, which is uh, this one. And as you can see, info is looking good because there are single quotes in there. So it's actually working. So if I click here now, I get all the data instead of just that bracket. But the problem is, valid json contains the double quote so before we convert this back to json we must uh, we must give it back its double quotes and exchange them for single quotes so let's come back here to uh, products.php here and then once we reach here so e dot target there that's good so I want to set this to a variable. So I'll say var a is equal to, and then we'll get that. But then I want to alert myself because if I try to say alert and I'll say json.parse because that's how we uh, make it back into uh, an object like that. If I try to parse that, let me come back here, refresh the page click you see that i get an error it doesn't work if i go to inspect the element in the console you see i will get a very valid error here something like json parse unexpected property name uh, yeah so that's those are the errors you get okay so instead of that let's do a replace so I will say something like info right here. I'll say var info is equal to json dot parse, but we are not parsing this um, thing directly. We're just going to say replace. Now, if I want to replace more than one item, I'll say replace all like that dot replace all. And then what am I replacing? I'm replacing the single quotes. So there we go, single quote. I will replace that with the double quotes, like I saw. So now I can alert myself to info. So if everything goes well, info should return an object. So let's come back here and see if that happens. So let's refresh and let's click over there and it says object, object. So everything went well and we have an object. So now the beauty of an object is we can simply fill in the blanks here with the items in the object. Easy peasy, right? 
So let's do just that. So let's info. And for example, info product or so category. So we don't really need this anymore. We can just get it from there because it exists in there and it's more uh, user friendly. So I'll say info dot description like that. And then uh, what I will do now is duplicate these guys just like that. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And then uh, edit. So I'll remove the description here. Uh, wait a minute. What are the names of these items anyway? So edit product end right there. So this edit image, edit, edit. Okay, so I think uh, that works fine. So what we want is edit quantity, for example. And then there's edit category. Category like that. What else? Edit. Uh, so there's quantity, price, and category. So let's see those by themselves. So I'll refresh the page and click here. And as you can see, everything has been filled in. The women's top, the quantity, the category, and the pricing. But the pricing is wrong. So let's come back here and confirm what we have done here. Okay, so it's because we didn't add it here. Quantity, price like a thaw. Refresh, click edit. Oops, I think we have done something wrong. We have a Y that doesn't exist. So refresh again, click, and there we go. So category, oh, I replaced category. Oh my God. So back here again, category. Hmm. Very good. Okay, so if I come back here again, refresh this time, click, and you see everything is good. So let me try this one, a different item, canned beef, for example. So there's canned beef, different category, and so on. So this is how we load the information so that when we are editing, we don't have to start from scratch. But keep in mind that we have images here and we kind of need to see the images themselves before we go ahead and replace them. So instead of pushing the images into the inputs here, we will do it over here and show some images, either here or at the bottom there. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.